question. Thank you very much. You're wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> I'm Sultan Barakat from the Post War Reconstruction and Development Unit, and I'll be using my three minutes just to focus our attention on local leadership and the importance we should be given to the locals to lead. And I hear very clearly the, Im the emphasis that we put internationally on qualities in leadership, the importance of it within our structures, et cetera. And we all know there's a hierarchy. We all know there is a, uh, a pathway for developing your skills and developing your position and you know, moving on in positions in the international system and so on. But what doesn't quite exist is the equivalent on the ground to allow uh, locals to develop those skills and to actually effectively work as leaders and be enabled to undertake that work uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and although uh, I would like to maybe focus our attention on the transition phase and post-crisis, mm. I think often the problem starts from the humanitarian uh, stage of it. We don't induce a culture where people are trusted as leaders from, from the very beginning. And therefore, it never really emerges. And in fact, in some cases, you find it's probably the opposite. We de-skill people. You get someone who's trained as an engineer with a lot of qualities as a leader, working as a driver simply because he or she could speak English. And then they're there for the job for about four years. You move on. You leave them behind. They're no longer engineer, no longer driver. There's no opportunity to drive or a guard and so on. So we haven't had that discussion to try and focus on how do we build leaders with a very clear uh, vis uh, view on the future. We all know that all crises at some stage have got to come to an end, one sort or, or another. And unfortunately, increasingly lately, we've been uh, seeing it being resolved through military means and uh, destruction of institutions and infrastructure and leadership is almost become the common way to go forward. You know, people have to move away from everything that was there uh, in order to make that transition. Now that in itself I find it uh, uh, difficult and requires us really to focus on what fills that space. And we saw it very recently in, in Egypt, you know, the whole Muslim Brotherhood thing. They were so focused on the need for them to win the elections, but they never really prepared the leadership to move the country forward on day two of the election. So there was never a discussion, knowledge, uh, objectives, a discussion around uh, taxation, what will happen next, Suez Canal, etc. There are a lot of important issues that were not debated. And I think part of the responsibility comes uh, to the international community that right from the very beginning, we keep on throwing concepts on, on developing countries. Resilience now is the most late, the latest. <laughs> Within that package, we should highlight the importance of building leadership both in the humanitarian leadership as well as the political transitional leadership from the very beginning. We are now engaged, Britain, as I understand it, engaged trying to coordinate the uh, opposition in Syria, but they're solely focused on political opposition and military, and they're wanting to win the conflict in a certain way. Nobody is giving any space to humanitarian leadership in Syria and how it, it could emerge with the sort of principles that Sarah has referred to earlier which I, I think would be very interesting. Um, and ultimately, I think, uh, and this is based on, on my involvement in, in post-conflict recovery for some time, without the four ma main element of a clear vision that has increasingly to be shared and, and uh, uh, a vision that carries people with, with you, you can't really move forward uh, without uh, understanding the context and the culture of like boundaries of the definition of leadership in those contexts also we cannot move forward. In many of the contexts we work in, they rely on rentier economies, on uh, patronage. Uh, you lead people not necessarily by getting their votes. Uh, you lead in, in, in other ways. And I think all of that requires further exploration and, and study. Uh, also, we need to place more and more emphasis on, on leadership that takes inducing development very, very seriously and within that, building longer term capacity. And, and finally, I think uh, leadership that uh, allows for uh, collaborative governance and shifting the focus from the uh, norms and the values that we expect of them as in good governance to uh, ways of doing governance in order for them to try to start some, somewhere so that they can, in time, I think, uh, improve on their processes. 
the system as it stands today is, is very limiting in relation to the local communities and, and local uh, recipient countries. Thank you very much. I think, Paul, would you like to... to uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, Paul. Oh, Paul. Oh, yeah. I'm no sorry, worries. I'm looking at the wrong end. <laughs> <laughs> sorry.